this video, we're going to learn how to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. And if you take a look at the top of our screen, we have this tip here that says to add or subtract fractions with different denominators, rename the fractions using a common denominator, then add the numerators and simplify the result if possible. So I'll explain what all that means once we start looking at example one. So example one is three fifths plus one seventh. The most important thing to remember when adding or subtracting fractions is that you have to have fractions with the same denominator. You cannot just add the numerators and add the denominators. We first have to find a common denominator. And the way we're going to find a common denominator is by finding a common multiple between the two given denominators. And we typically want to find the least common multiple because it'll just make our lives the easiest. So over here, I'm going to write down some multiples of 5. So remember, multiples of a number are just numbers that that number goes into evenly. So I'm just going to write down the first maybe 10 multiples of 5. So we have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 50. And now I'm going to write down some multiples of 7 until I get to one that's also a multiple of 5. So I have 7. 14, 21, 28, 35, and we'll notice that 35 is also a multiple of 5, so that is the least common multiple of 7 and 5. So we want to change the denominators of each fraction to 35. So what we're going to do is we're going to put 35 on the bottom of both fractions, and now we have to figure out what our numerator needs to be to keep these fractions equivalent. So let's look at 3 fifths first. To get from 5 to 35, we have to multiply by 7, right? Because 5 times 7 is 35. So to keep our fraction equivalent, whatever we multiply the denominator by, we also have to multiply the numerator by. So we have to multiply the numerator by 7 also. And 3 times 7 is going to give us 21. So 3 fifths turns into 21 30 fifths. Now we're going to do the same thing with 1 seventh. So to get from 7 to 35, we had to multiply by 5. So we have to multiply our numerator by 5 also. So this turns into 5 30 fifths. So now we have 21 30 fifths plus 5 30 fifths. And now that we have common denominators, it's really easy. We're just going to add the numerators. So 21 plus 5 is going to give us 26. We keep the denominator the same. So our denominator is 35. We check if we can simplify, and we cannot because 26 and 35 do not have any common factors. So we get 26 35ths as our final answer. Let's move on to example two, which is subtraction. So luckily, the rules for subtraction are pretty much the same as the rules for addition. First, we need a common denominator. So we have to find the least common multiple of 9 and 3. So I'll start by writing out some multiples of 3. So we have 3, 6... 9, 12, 15, 18, and I'll stop there. And then 9, the first multiple of 9 is itself, which we realize is also in the 3 list. So 9 is the least common multiple of 3 and 9. So we need both of our fractions to have a denominator of 9. And this problem is nice because our first fraction already has a denominator of 9. So we're going to keep 8 ninths as it is. So I have 8 ninths minus. And then for the second fraction, I need to make a denominator of 9. So I need to think, how do I get from 3 to 9? So if I multiply 3 by 3, I can get 9. So I have to multiply the top of the fraction by 3 also to make it an equivalent fraction. 2 times 3 is going to give us 6. So 2 thirds turns into 6 ninths. And now we're just going to subtract the numerators. So 8 minus 6 is 2 keep the denominator as it is. So we get 8 ninths minus 2 thirds is equal to 2 ninths. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. So if we look at example 3, we have 16 thirtieths plus 15 eighteenths. And it's always a good rule of thumb to try and simplify our fractions before we add or subtract them. We didn't have to do that for examples 1 and 2, but we can simplify our fractions for this example. So we're going to be able to simplify 16 thirtieths and 15 eighteenths. So let's go ahead and simplify 16 thirtieths first. We can divide the top and bottom of 16 thirtieths by 2. If we divide 16 by 2, we're going to get an 8 on the top. If we divide 30 by 2, we're going to get 15 on the bottom. 
So now we have 8 fifteenths instead of 16 thirtieths. And we can also simplify 15 over 18 by dividing the top and bottom by 3. So if I divide 15 by 3, I'm going to get a 5 on the top. And if I divide 18 by 3, I'm going to get a 6 on the bottom. And now I want to find a common denominator for 15 and 6. So I want to find the least common multiple of 15 and 6. So I'm going to start by writing out some multiples of 6 up here. So we're going to have 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36. And I'll stop there for now. And if I need more, I'll add some more after. And now I'll write down some multiples of 15 until I get one that's also a multiple of 6. So we're going to have 15, 30, and you may realize that 30 is in both lists. So the least common multiple of 6 and 15 is 30. So I want to change both denominators of my fractions to 30. So I'm going to put a 30 on the bottom of both fractions. And now we need to think, how did we get from 15 to 30? Well, we multiplied by 2. So anything we do to the bottom of our fraction, we have to do to the top. So we have to multiply the top of our fraction by 2. And 8 times 2 is going to give us a 16. So we're back to 16 thirtieths, which is what we started with. And now we're going to do the same thing for 5 6. So we're going to think, how did we get from 6 to 30? Well, we have to multiply by 5. So we have to multiply the numerator of our fraction by 5 as well. 5 times 5 is going to give us a 25 on the top. So now we need to add 16 thirtieths plus 25 thirtieths. So now we're just going to add the numerators together. So 16 plus 25 is going to give us 41 on the top. And we're going to have 30 on the bottom. And we can't simplify that because 41 and 30 don't have any common factors besides 1. But we could write it as a mixed number if we prefer to write it like that. So we could write it as 1 and 11 thirtieths. So we get 41 thirtieths or 1 and 11 thirtieths as our answer. And moving on to example 4, we have 11 twelfths minus 3 fourths. So we can't simplify either of these fractions, so we want to start by finding the least common denominator. So we need to find the least common multiple of 4 and 12. So I'm going to start by writing out some multiples of 4. So we have 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and I'll stop there for now. And we're going to write some multiples of 12 until we get one that's on the list of 4 multiples. So the first multiple of 12 is just itself, which is 12. And we'll notice that this is in our list of multiples of 4. So the least common multiple of 4 and 12 is 12. So since our first fraction already has a denominator of 12, we're just going to keep it as is. And now we need to change 3 fourths to have a denominator of 12. So I'm going to write a 12 down here. And we have to think, what did we multiply 4 by to get to 12? Well, 4 times 3 is 12. So we're going to have to multiply our numerator by 3 as well. And 3 times 3 is going to give us a 9. So now we have 11 twelfths minus 9 twelfths. And now we want to just subtract the numerators. So 11 minus 9 is going to give us a 2 on the top. We keep our denominator as 12. So we get 2 twelfths. And now we just want to simplify this. So we can divide the top and bottom by 2. 2 divided by 2 gives us a 1 as our numerator. 12 divided by 2 gives us a 6 as our denominator. So we get 1 sixth as our answer. Let's go through two more examples. So for these last two examples, I encourage you to pause the video and try them on your own. And then you can watch the video when you're finished to make sure that you did the problems correctly. So example 5 says 4 fifteenths plus 13 twentieths. We can't simplify either of these fractions, so we're going to start by finding the least common multiple of 15 and 20. So I'm going to write out a few multiples of 15. So we have 15, 30, 45, 60, 75. And now I'm going to write out some multiples of 20 and see if they have anything in common. So we have 20, 40, 60, and we realize that 60 is in both lists, so we'll stop there. So 60 is going to be our least common denominator. So now I want to change both denominators to be 60. So I'm going to write 60 under both fractions. And now I think, how did I get from 15 to 60? 
Well, 15 times 4 is going to give me 60, so I have to multiply the numerator by 4. And 4 times 4 is going to give me 16, so now I have 16 sixtieths as my first fraction. We're going to do the same thing for the second fraction. So 20 times 3 is going to give us 60, so I have to multiply the numerator by 3 also. And 13 times 3 is going to give me 39. And now I just want to add the numerator, so 16 plus 39 is going to give me 55. So I get 55 on the top, I keep my denominator as 60. And 55 and 60 are both multiples of 5, so I can simplify this fraction by dividing the top and bottom by 5. 55 divided by 5 is 11, and 60 divided by 5 is 12, so I get 11 twelfths as my answer. And finally, let's look at example 6, which is 9 tenths minus 9 twenty-fourths. So we can simplify 9 twenty-fourths because 3 goes into both of them. So we can't simplify 9 tenths, so I'll keep it as 9 tenths. And we're going to divide the top and bottom of 9 twenty-fourths by 3. 9 divided by 3 is going to give us a 3 on the top, and 24 divided by 3 is going to give us an 8 on the bottom. So now we have 9 tenths minus 3 eighths, and we want to find the least common multiple of 10 and 8. So I'm going to write out some multiples of 8 first. So 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48, and I'll stop there. If we need more, I'll write some more. And now we're going to write out some multiples of 10. So 10, 20, 30, 40, and we realize that 40 is in both of the lists, so 40 is going to be our lowest common denominator. So we want to change both fractions to have a denominator of 40. To get from 10 to 40, we multiply by 4, so we have to multiply the 9 by 4 also, which is going to give us 36 on the top of the first fraction. And for the second fraction, similar thing. So to get from 8 to 40, we multiply by 5, so I have to multiply my numerator by 5 as well. 3 times 5 gives me a 15, and now I just need to subtract the numerators. So 36 minus 15 is going to give me a 21 on the top. So I get 21 over 40, which I cannot simplify, so 21 over 40 is the correct answer. So that's all the problems we're going to go through in this video. I hope it helped you guys learn how to add and subtract fractions with different denominators. Just remember that you always need to have a common denominator when adding or subtracting fractions.